There is a huge amount of confusion around the DJI O3 system and antennas. The system itself is dual band, but it doesn't always actually use the 2.4 gigs band because that is dependent on if you are using the DJI FPV remote or not. Also, there's confusion about the type of antennas that are on the goggles, the type of antenna that comes on the original O3 ear unit, and then you have situations like this with O3 ear units being used with standard antennas like on this iFlight quad. Today, I'm going to try and demystify all of this. We're going to walk through the situation with the antennas on the goggles, the O3 ear unit, and we're also then going to take a look at what alternative antenna options are available and hopefully by the end you'll have a better understanding of what the situation is. Now just before we get into it I just want to say please do make sure you give this video a like if you do find it interesting and if you'd like to support the channel to allow us to keep making content like this in the future there is a link to my Patreon in the description but I'll talk about that a bit more at the end. Okay, so the first thing we're going to quickly go over is the situation with the system being dual band. O3 supports both 2.4 and 5 gigs, but it only uses the 2.4 gigs in certain situations, and that is if you are using the DJI O3 system with this, the DJI FPV remote. In my testing, if you are using O3 on its own with an independent remote system, you are always in 5 gigs mode. It will not go into 2.4 gigs unless you are using this remote in the system. As a result of that, if you're using the O3 system with your own independent RC link, whether that be Crossfire, Express, LRS or anything else, you only need to use 5 gigahertz antennas on this system. That is why when you buy drones from the likes of iFlight, like this Nazgul, this one has come with Crossfire and it is only fitted with 5 gigs antennas because it does not need the 2.4 gigs ones. That situation is the same for the ear unit and the goggles and no matter what you're doing it will only enter into that 2.4 mode if you're going to be using this remote. If you are using this remote on your system, my personal advice is stop and go and get yourself something that actually works properly. I do have a dedicated video on this and whilst the remote itself is okay, there are some real quirks to the RC link on this and I personally don't advise anyone uses this remote controller at all unless you're simply flying around a field where your quad is always in view. If you're flying though longer range or somewhere where your quad could have a failure that you can't recover, I would certainly not be choosing to use this RC setup. Moving on to the antennas and starting with the goggles too. Now everything I say here predominantly is the same for the DJI goggles Integra as well. However, the big difference is you cannot remove the antennas on the Integra, whereas they are removable on the goggles too. Now there are four antennas on this. We have one, two here, but there are two internal PCB antennas, one located here and one located here in an X pattern right behind this nose piece right next to the internal fan. All of the antennas on these goggles are dual band. There are not 2.4 gigs ones here and 5 gigs here. That's a dual band antenna, that's a dual band antenna and all of the internal ones are. The antennas on these goggles are removable, so if you give them a tug, you can pull them off. And inside, they're connected via an MCX connector. Not the easiest one to get to, but it is there. And there are antennas available as a third-party option on these goggles right now. For instance, TrueRC makes some antennas available for these goggles, and there are some new ones coming from Flyfish RC as well. Upgrade options on these goggles is fairly limited. As I've said, we've only got the TrueRC ones and the Flyfish. On the V2s, we had lots of options with things like this, the Osprey HD front end. This would actually replace that front panel, but this really can't easily be fitted to these goggles. However, that isn't to say if you were very keen on doing a modification, you couldn't actually take these goggles apart. There is access to the internal SMA connectors for those front antennas in there. And if you really wanted to do something radical, you could connect external SMA ports on this and then actually connect up something like this, giving you much better performance. But again, that is going to have an effect on your warranty. Moving over to the V2s and predominantly everything is the same here. Again, dual band, all four antennas are dual band. We have two receive, which is this one and this one, and two transmit, 
which is this one and this one. As a result of that, you have lots of options around what you want to do with upgrades. Most people on these goggles install a patch antenna like I showed you earlier or something like what I've got here from iFlight, which is the crystal on my V1s. And the best way to set the antennas up on this is if you're using a patch, put it on the bottom two ports. That way you've got one antenna on transmit and one antenna on receive. It is worth noting that actually all of the ports on this antenna can receive. It's only those two that will transmit. However, the best balance is having one patch on each and that should give you the best overall performance. Now, what a lot of people do is just replace the faceplate, connect them to the bottom ports and leave the DJI antennas on the top. There's no real need to replace these unless you want something smaller. There are lots of other options out there like these here. Again, these are linear antennas just like on the goggles too. So if you are going to move over to circular polarized, you might want to try putting circular polarized on the Omni side. However, again, it really isn't something I'd recommend people worry about too much and I'll talk about that a bit more later on in the video. Now, with regards to these patches, most of these are five gigs only, but again, as I've already mentioned to you, if you're using the system without the DJI remote, you don't have to worry about the 2.4 gig band. The only time you have to worry about that is if you are using the DJI FPV remote version two. If you are using that, you could still actually use these with a patch on the bottom two ports and leave the Omni antennas on the top. That's still gonna give you a good middle ground with regards to performance because predominantly the video on 03 is going to stay on 5 gigs anyway, can go to 2.4 but it predominantly stays on 5 gigs so you could do it that way to give you the best of both worlds setup. Moving over to the O3 ear unit as well as the original O3 antenna. Now this ear unit has dual antenna ports. They are not one band per port, they are both dual band ports, so they both do 2.4 and 5 gigs. They both go into this antenna and this antenna is a little bit of a strange beast because it is a bit different to anything that we've seen before because it is a dual linear polarised antenna. Just showing you it there a little bit closer, you can see we do have two UFL inputs and they both go in and terminate inside. Now what we're going to do in a moment is actually tear this antenna down and give you a closer look at how it actually works. But the very basics are it is dual linear elements opposite polarized to cancel each other out. And as I've said, both inputs are both 2.4 and 5 gigs capable. Now taking a look inside, you'll see that the antenna itself is actually made from this flexible material. The way it works is this, there are dual, dual band linear elements printed onto this material. They are set at 45 degrees opposite each other to give a linear polarization. The reason that is done is because the antenna elements are so close they would actually interfere with each other and DJI have done it in such a way to try and make an antenna that offers fairly good performance in as much of a compact package as they could. Now there are many different ways that DJI could have made this antenna. It isn't the best in the world and it isn't the worst in the world as I understand it. Hugo at TrueRC who actually gave me a lot of the information on this has said it certainly isn't the greatest thing as a result of trying to cram two independent elements into such a small space but overall we do know the performance on this antenna is fairly good and I wouldn't say you absolutely have to rush out and replace it unless it is damaged. What you can see is that it would be very easy to damage and that is why it is covered in this hard casing. But there are other options out there if you did want to upgrade the antenna on your O3 ear unit. Options include things like this. We have the Osprey antennas from Flyfish RC as well as some singularities from TrueRC. Now these here are left hand and right hand polarised so that is a different polarisation compared to the DJI goggles. However, there are upgrades available for them too so you could use these with them if you were to replace the antennas on both sides. These though are not UFL antennas and as such you are going to need to use these with adapters and obviously you'd need two of them like we used to do with the original DJI ear unit. 
If you were looking for something more of a direct replacement for the O3 antenna though, there is something like this from Flyfish RC. These are their dual band UFL antennas for O3. They're available in different sizes. And again, just like the original DJI antenna, they have dual inputs, which are both dual band. They're linear polarized and they're a great option as a direct replacement for the O3 antenna should you damage it or you're looking to try something to see if it improves the performance. Overall, I have tested these a little bit and they're not dramatically better, but they're certainly not worse. What I would say is they offer very comparable performance to the original DJI one. Now, one of the things that always comes up in this is around antenna polarization, because you do have a scenario where there's a real possibility of having a mismatch. For instance, the Goggles 2 and Integras have linear antennas, but you may choose, like I've got on this quad, to have circular polarized antennas. These are left, you might have right, it really doesn't make a difference. There is a loss that is associated if you do mismatch the polarization, that is roughly 3 dB when going from circular polarized down to linear, and it is much higher if going from left to right circular polarized, potentially around 20 dB. However, in the end, it isn't as black and white as that, and many people could mix polarization, i.e. use left-hand circular polarized on their quad, but linear on their goggles, and have no problems at all. You are more likely to have issues around a loose connector than you are around that side of things, and what I would say is I wouldn't rush out and spend huge amounts of money on new antennas for your goggles just to put left or right hand circularized polarized on your quad. Everything is a balance because you've got to remember your quad may be fitted with a dual band antenna now, which is linear, but that antenna is not as efficient as say a left hand circular polarized antenna specifically designed for five gigs. And whilst you may be introducing a mismatch of 3 dB, you still could gain performance as a result of the new antenna on the quad performing much better than that former dual band one. There are many, many things to take into account with antennas. It is not just about polarization. And I actually have a video that I put together on antennas that I'll link to in the description, which really does cover this subject very well. It goes into the differences between antenna loss, antenna gain, and it's not just about polarization. You can have one antenna that has really great SWR, but really poor efficiency that won't be as good as an antenna with really high SWR. SWR, but high efficiency, and there are many, many factors to take into account. So in the end, we have the DJI Goggles 2 with four linear antennas with two that you can upgrade. You have the DJI O3E unit that comes with a linear polarized dual band antenna, but you could upgrade that to a circular polarized single band antenna if you want, and you'd probably still see some improvements. We are seeing more and more antennas come out for this system as time goes on. The ear unit side of things really isn't a problem, but the Goggles 2 aren't the easiest form factor to produce antennas for. True RC have their X's, which are going to give you really great directional performance. And there are some new ones coming from Flyfish RC as well, which are going to be very interesting. And I'll be talking about them on the channel in the near future. As for what you should do, well, my suggestion is stick in with what your system comes with, because the chances are it's probably fine. There is no great need to run out and replace antennas on this system. The O3 system performs really, really well as it comes, even with that DJI antenna. But if you are wanting to upgrade and you want to get the maximum range, I'd be looking at something like the TrueRC XEs for the DJI Goggles 2. But again, they are very directional antennas and they are going to come at a cost of having performance loss around sides and around the back. Or if you wanted to upgrade the antennas on your craft side, you want to be looking at some really good 5 gigs antennas only if you're going down the road of your own RC system. Or if you're using the DJI R system, you could really stay with the DJI one, but you could check out those Flyfish RC ones as well. My advice is always don't change anything unless something's wrong, but hopefully now you have an understanding on this system of if something does go wrong, 
what antenna to choose. Now, I hope you have found this video interesting. If you have, please do let me know in the comment section. Please do give it a like as well. As I said at the start, I do have a Patreon, and if you're interested in supporting the channel to allow us to keep making videos like this in the future, we did buy these goggles too. And if you'd like to support us to allow us to do that in the future again, please do consider checking it out. I want to say a massive thank you to all of my Patreons. I would not be able to keep making content on this channel without your support. Anyway, that's it from me on this one. Stay safe. I'll speak to you soon.